Well that's done. And the advantage of lubricating something like that with graphite powder rather than oil or grease is that graphite powder does not get st sticky over time. Will not attract and stick dust and grit there. Just run a little bit of synthetic grease down there and get the springs and the buttons fitted back in place holding one in place with my finger while I line up the other part That's it, so having those compressed between finger and thumb, I'll slide on the shroud. Yeah, they popped up quite positively there. That's holding firmly, so straightening up the shroud seems to be the secret there. That's working nicely, so I will lubricate that front section. Now basically it runs on these rails here, top and bottom. I need to lubricate those with a bit of synthetic grease. And in the centre, here, is where the chrome button runs it feels a bit rough at that side that was at the bottom, that really wasn't the area that appeared to be causing problems but that certainly felt a bit rough at that point that seems to be good so, just about put that back in the body. I'll line up a few parts. first thing I need to get done here is get this shaft back in. This is the shaft that gets driven by the shutter cocking rack. So I applied some synthetic grease to that, drop it back into the body, put its little bracket on, 
supporting the bracket from underneath I'll get the screw through the bracket you can see the bracket's twisted there so I'm going to poke that back into line no that's not going for me I'm just trying to figure out why this was fighting me and it's because the bellows have taken a set normally the bellows are predisposed to fold up because the camera has been stored folded up but in this camera the camera was arrived here opened out so the bellows are predisposed to stay in the open position so it's just making it difficult for me to get my finger in here and um, get that part lined up now I need to make sure there's a decent clearance there where the shutter cocking rack runs through here and I've discovered that four, four one thousandths of an inch is a very good clearance if I make sure I've got that much clearance there's not too much so that I've got good tooth contact between the rack and the gear but it's not it's not unduly stiff That seems to move smoothly. I'll make sure that bracket is sitting square. That's gone stiff now. What's gone wrong there? That seems okay. I'll just roll that over. Try it a bit further over in case there's a rough patch on that wheel. It could be. I'm going to take that out and check that shaft. I suspect that the gear has a um, rough tooth on it. If that's the case, that's not the end of the world because we don't need it to turn a full circle. But I want to be sure. Just checking here, see if I see anything. Sometimes a little bit of grit might get in there and prevent the rack from moving smoothly. I'm just holding this to the light. No, it looks okay. Okay. Put it back. That screw back in there. Certainly no stiffness there. I'm looking at the state of the rack to see if there's a problem there. I've seen teeth that are a bit better than that, but they, they look pretty good. I'll be giving them a bit of an encouragement shortly to go back where they should be. Can you see this? Only just. It's certainly a rough patch there somewhere. Something's catching. Let me just try that in a different orientation. Sometimes it's the casting in the body. Sometimes there's a rubbed up patch here or a rough spot that catches the, uh, the rack. Just trying to see if that's what's happening here. We know this camera's had a hard light having fallen off the tripod. Okay.
Well that's behaving itself nicely now, we'll just consider that to be okay I think for the moment. I'll zoom out a bit, we're having trouble staying in the camera here. Right, so this front piece here, let's put the shutter release component in and then partly close the front down so that it doesn't lose it. Now we had a, oh there was that, bush needs to go back in here. Of course that was that had fallen out. Let's just press that back into place. It's not uncommon for this bush to fall out of place because it's just um, not very well supported. There's almost no metal down one side of it there and as a result it drops out very easily. Let's press that into place. Drop this back into the camera body. I'll get that screw in at the top first because we know that's going to give me trouble. See if I can get that running. Yes, that went in. Two of these screws are obviously didn't come from the top because I can see traces of the old adhesive on the bottom of them. So we know they came from here. Once I have all four screws in position, I can tighten them up. I want to check the action of this front standard. Check that it pulls up into position and it latches smoothly. I think that'll be fine. So on that basis I'm just going to carry on and continuing putting the camera back together. I'm not expecting any uh, ridiculous problems after this. I think this is going to go together fairly smoothly. Well, at least I'm hopeful that it will. What's that? Oh, that's that shutter release there. I'll just put the shaft in there so that's not flopping about. I'll find my shutter release shaft. There it is. Still a bit of tightness there somewhere that it's it might be still too much play here. I'm just looking at the vertical play in that component. And there is a little bit there. I'm gonna see if we can take some of that out, I think. So I'll take this shroud back out and just give that a little bit more encouragement to go as flat as I want it to go. I thought I had that pretty good but it looks like there's a little bit too much play there. that out, slide this piece out again and have a look at the state of this. Just judge if that looks straight to me. To be honest it doesn't look like it's a hundred miles away from correct. I just gave that a little squeeze. It's fairly soft that aluminium, there's not much um,
stiffness there. It's fine at the front. Oh, that seems good. Let's put it back in the body. Of course, the body could be stretched, and as soon as we, if the body is somewhat stretched here, as soon as I do those screws up, it's pulling these, this piece open. So that's a possibility too. This would have been stretched at the same time, quite possibly. I'm just going to see if I can see that. I'm at about 58.5 there. 58. Fifty-eight, probably about 0 0.2, 0 0.25. It's too dark to see there. Oh, it's about 58.5, so it's, it varies across there anyway. Let's pop this back in. Have another look. It seems all right. There's not does seem to be a, a, a an, an unusual amount of clearance there. Sometimes they're tight to get into the body. Sometimes they're not. I wouldn't have said that was unusual. And all I need is a sliding section that moves smoothly, with no ideally with no rattle. If it doesn't move smoothly, or if it, there's too much play there, it'll probably be not running in a straight line and it won't go well. Let's try this. Put my shutter release in, stop that floating about. No, that seems good. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Well, on the basis of that, I think I can put my focus helical all back together. I start with the focus mount, I'll get that in the body. Right, let's get this lens mount fixed back to the body. Shutter focus mount, I should have said. I'll just do those four screws up tight. That's fine. Now let's have a look at the lens helical. Just a little bit uh, rough feeling. I'm just going to polish those two pieces together. This often burnishes the surfaces. Put a bit of naphtha in there. So they're not completely dry and then rub the surfaces together often that just rubs off any high spots. Now I've got to get this in the right position. Where are my alignment marks? There. So I need to be one more. One stop further over. That's it. That's where it wants to be. Right, so some helical grease. I'll just back that most of the way out. Put a touch of helical grease in five or six spots 
around the circumference we don't need as much as that rub that in, work that That seems fine. Now I'll put some around the outside because this is where it fits down into the focus mount. And where it runs on the two posts, I'll just put a wipe in there and there. Bring the camera body back in. I know which way's up because I have one mark at the top and two marks at the bottom. So if I find my marks, I know it's going to go that way up. We'll check it moves smoothly. Seems good. Now the retainer ring. Just want a polite wipe around that. You can see where it's been rubbing because there'll be bright marks where it's rubbed through the black on the areas that are under contact. So that goes on there. Four countersunk screws hold that in position. And here I've got the inner helical forward of the outer helical. In other words, it's not pushed all the way back into the infinity position. Have it. If you try to do these screws up while the inner helical is behind the front surface of the outer you'll end up jamming the thing up you'll find it won't move get those four screws tightened up and again check that the focus moves smoothly that looks good I'll collapse this down I've got my four screws that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard I want those in position and those down now you're not pulling metal against metal when you do those screws up you've got the bellows leather and fabric in between so they don't do up tight like a metal to metal fit so don't overdo it you're never going to get to that stage if you overdo it you'll end up breaking the screws okay so that's that part where is our focus scale ring? That can go on, and of course I've got my alignment marks for that that I'd made. Just checking the state of those. You can usually tell where the screws were previously too, because often they bit into the metal at those points, so it's usually possible to use that as a guide as well. These screws don't want to be done up tight. Get them all in position, quite loose, and check your alignment of your marks, and then just nip the screws up lightly. They do not need to be done up very tight. If you do them up very tight, all you'll do is end up distorting the focus helical, and the focus will be stiff. I was checking my alignment marks between the outer helical and that focus scale ring and that looks just spot on. Check that that moves smoothly. That seems very good. This piece here I need this to be flat. I'm just checking to see if it, it isn't. It's certainly not at the moment. I'll need some pliers on that. I've got to pull, pull this arm here. It's got to be pulled back this way. 
I'm just checking this on this bench block which has got a nice ground face on it to see where where it is and how flat it sits see if there are high spots That looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with the state of that. Now fit this into position. It is always difficult wriggling this thing in even on a good day. There's not much space there. That's it. I'm going to have to pull it across. The arm's not sitting in the right position. I'll get its two screws in here. Where's that arm? It's over there. That's better. And we've got the screw at the top here that actually pulls the arm on the rangefinder forwards as you focus towards a closer distance. Get that in position. Check that that moves smoothly. And that's moving well. That seems fine. Okay, I'm quite happy with the state of that. So I've just got to put my shroud and gear here off for the, for the shutter cocking on the front of that piece. And then I can put the door on there, I think. Right, well that's working smoothly. I want to put this piece in next, so we'll get... Give that a wipe of synthetic grease. In the centre where it runs on the shaft, where it runs through the front standard here, and usually a wipe on the outside is good. And it's running on the shaft fine. Get the cover in place. And there are two chrome plated brass screws. Take care not to damage these, they're easily scarred up if you slip with your screwdriver. If you do make a mess of one of the screws, put the better looking screw here at the top where it can be seen and leave its unfortunate friend to take the other position. That way, way nobody will be any the wiser. That's good. roughness I'm feeling there and I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. I'll put the door on the front and we'll see how it behaves with the door in place. wipe of grease there. There's a rough spot on the aluminium at that point. I'm not sure what I think that that door, when it came to me, the door was um, 
sitting where you'd expect it to be but I, it may not have been like that when the camera was picked up from the floor someone might have pushed it back into position and that means that uh, there was possibly other damage which wasn't obvious because it had been disguised. Now I'll just get two of these hinge pin screws and we have our spacer washers and we had the thicker of the two spacer washers at the top here see if I can get that into position the hinge pin screw started doesn't want to go in here we go that's better and one at the bottom now I've got to be careful not to let my shutter release fall out here otherwise it will give me grief so I'll be careful about that if it falls out the little arm it travels through will probably become dislodged and then it can fall into the space between the bellows and the front standard and be very very awkward to uh, get it back out in fact you have to dismantle the camera to get it back out and get it back where it came from get this screw run in here door open and close well it does but I don't like the look of that top button it doesn't look like it's latching out far enough it's certainly not it means that these arms are bent and so I'm going to need to take this off the door off and deal to those arms I'll do that and report back. 